guys, it's Reagan, and welcome back to another video. I am thrilled to be in a full-on summer dress for you guys because it is officially summer, which can only mean one thing, where I talk about the top five books I read for the previous season. Today I'm going to be doing my spring reading and review, where I show off all of the books I read for the previous season, which will be March. Uh, April and May and then I will talk about my favorite books from that season at the end of this video I'll also have all of my wrap-ups linked down below if you want to have in-depth thoughts for all of the books mentioned in this video But without further ado, let's jump in and start with March first up We have the fifth season by NK Jemisin, which I gave a five out of five stars next We have hero of ages by Brandon Sanderson, which was a reread for me But also gave it a five out of five stars then we have a China rich girlfriend by Kevin Kwan uh, Which I gave five out of five stars loved this book so funny. Next is Deathcaster by Cinder Williams Chima, the final book in the Shadowed Realm series, which I gave five out of five stars. Then last book for the month of March, I have Keeper of the Lost Cities Never Seen by Shaded Messenger, which I think I gave like a 4.5 out of five stars. Next up, moving on to the month of April, I have Kingdom of Copper by S.A. Chakraborty, which I gave five out of five stars. Then I have Good Omens by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman, which I gave a three out of five stars. Next is Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon, which I gave you 3.75 out of 5 stars. And lastly, I have The Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemisin, which of course I gave a 5 out of 5 stars to. And moving into the very last month of the season, uh, May, <laughs> the first book is The Missing of Claire de Lune by Christelle Davos, which I gave 5 out of 5 stars to. Then I have Wicked Saints by Emily A. Duncan, which I gave a 2.75 out of 5 stars. And we have Keeper of the Lost Cities Lodestar, my favorite book in this series so far, and this is book 5 uh, by Shada Messenger, and I gave this 5 out of 5 stars. So good. Next up I have Again But Better by Christine Riccio, which I love very much, and I'm also like kind of coordinating with right now. Hey. And then lastly, for the month of May, I have The Stone Sky by N.K. Jemisin, 5 out of 5 stars. This trilogy was basically the best thing I've read so far this year. <laughs> Alrighty, so those are all of the books I completed for the previous season, so now let's jump into the top five books. In all fairness to the other books, I'm just gonna start with the Broken Earth trilogy, which basically, if you were to take one recommendation from this video, I would say pick this series up because it was mind-boggling, exceptional, just everything you want. It's also the most unique fantasy trilogy I feel like I've come across ever, honestly. This is a trilogy I marathon throughout the spring months and each one just perfectly bled into e the next one. This is a series that's set in a world where basically humanity ends over and over again, and that is because the Earth is constantly producing geological catastrophes, from earthquakes to tsunamis to volcanoes, any major earth-shattering catastrophe can, that could occur at any moment. There are also individuals that live in this world who can harness the Earth's power, um, and instead of being kind of lauded and celebrated and looked at as protectors, they are instead controlled by society at large, and is, this is basically ruled by fear. We follow a variety of different characters throughout this entire series with different motivations and goals. We're basically trying to figure out what is going on, how can it be fixed, and why anyone would want to actually try to fix it. Um, this is a really powerful trilogy um, that touches on so many different topics. It's definitely adult, I want to call it out. Uh, it delves into some very adult themes and has some really dark topics as well, but identity, sexuality, motherhood, race and identity as well. So many different things are touched on with such finesse within this series. I loved it so much. It has so much to offer. Absolutely incredible. I'm obviously not the only one who's liked this series because each one won the Hugo Award, which is a huge, huge award within the science fiction fantasy world. So this is so good, guys. Another book I want to mention is Keeper of the Lost Cities Lodestar. I read two Keeper of the Lost Cities books within this season, but I would say by far and away, this particular novel is my favorite book in the series so far. This middle grade fantasy series has just exceeded my expectations in so many ways, and it's just grown with each book. I would say the emotional stake and plot stakes and character development was something I was not anticipating going into this series. I thought it would be kind of light and fun and we would have some adventure, etc., which we definitely do. All those components are there, but everything is just so much better than I thought it was going to be. Plus, there's a lot of emotional intensity in this series as well. This is a middle grade series that follows her main character, Sophie, who basically in the very first one um, discovers that she is an elf, she has telepathic and telekinetic abilities, and she starts to, you know, she moves to the elven world, goes to a magic school, starts to make friends, 
but it's like so much bigger than that. There's this huge mystery. You see Sophie, our main character, begin to grow up, accept herself, make friends. She makes really great connections with a variety of different people within her world, peers, but also adults. I feel like there's just so many different types of relationships within this series, so many of them positive, and I just really appreciate Shannon Messenger's approach to that. Healthy adult relationships, healthy mentor relationships, healthy friendships, and like, characters obviously growing and learning along the way as well. This particular book, <laughs> I cried. <laughs> it was so good. Um, but I definitely would just recommend this middle grade series so much. It will totally keep your attention, catch you by surprise. It's so good. Next, I have to talk about Deathcaster by Cindy Williams Chima. This is the fourth and final book to the Shadow Realm series, which makes me so sad. I hope she's coming out with more books because I do not know what I'm gonna do without more Cindy Williams Chima on my bookshelf. I needed to at least take up a full shelf, okay? The Realm series, I would say, all in all, was great. Uh, I felt like from start to finish, each book was just magnificent, really captured your attention, and I just feel like she's so good at crafting a unique fantasy world with different and very diverse perspectives and bringing them together in unique and interesting ways that you would not expect. The third book to this really left off with a bang, so I was curious how she was gonna wrap all the threads up. But of course, in Cinna Williams Chima style, she did it perfectly. <laughs> everything just felt complete, I felt whole, I loved the story so much. Obviously, don't take that as everything's hunky-dory. This is a series that has so many different types of stakes and emotions at play. But honestly, I just feel like she's the master of YA fantasy. She just knows what to do, and I can always rely on her to create a wonderful story. Again, I need more books from her. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Next book I'm gonna talk about is The Missing of Claire de Lune by Christelle Davos. This is book two to the Mirror Visitor series, and honestly, I would say one of the most unique YA fantasy books I have read in a very long time, both from a character perspective. I mean, the characters that are present in this book, particularly our two main kind of like protagonists, are unlike anyone I have really encountered in YA before. Uh, I feel like they offer rich new types of character development and I just am here for every second of it. This world is also so fascinating. It's definitely inspired by a lot of different mythological and theological like backgrounds. Um, that being said, the second book I loved even more than the first one. To give you a bit of background on the story, we basically follow our main character, Ophelia, who really just wants to live an unremarkable life. This is a world where basically different kingdoms and groups of people live on different like spires in the sky. Some sort of event occurred in this world basically ruining it and then a way to save it they basically made these spires. Ophelia lives on this spire with her family as well as her family's spirit Artemis and she basically spends her day working in her museum. Ophelia has two very interesting sets of powers. She can one, touch objects and see their entire history and everyone who kind of interacted with it, and two, she can travel through mirrors. At the beginning of this first book, however, she's basically arranged to be married to a very powerful man in a far away spire. She travels there and realizes that it's completely different than her own. It's this dark and bleak and freezing um, kind of court-centered spire. Uh, politics are absolutely cutthroat and she finds herself very much in the center of everything. Ophelia, our main character, is one, again, that I just find to be so unique. She's definitely very quiet. She's She definitely isn't this like boisterous, loud, YA fantasy heroine by any means, but that does not mean she's not strong. You really see her kind of come into her own and find her own personal brand of strength, and I love every second of it. I just think this world is so unique. I think the writing is absolutely beautiful. I cannot wait for the third one. This series has excelled my very high expectations for it already. It's just great. Honestly, if you're looking for something a little different, please read this. And the very last book I'm gonna talk about is Kingdom of Copper by S.A. Chakraborty. This is the sequel to City of Brass by obviously the same author, which is a Middle Eastern inspired fantasy uh, story that again, is absolutely incredible. Follows our main character, Nahiri, who lives in 18th century uh, Cairo, Egypt. At the beginning of the first one, she basically spends her days pickpocketing and thieving to get by. However, she accidentally summons a warrior genie and then she's sent off to this new genie land. She discovers she's actually a pretty central piece within a lot of these different genie politics. 
This particular fantasy series I love so much because I feel like the court intrigue and the politics of the world are just masterfully done. I mean, all uh, this, this series definitely has combat and fighting and warfare, but really at the heart of it and what gets like me turning the pages is I have no idea how these people are going to resolve their issues. Everything within this world is centuries, centuries, centuries old. People live very long lives and there is a lot of distrust and hatred with reason across all sides, which makes the conflict so difficult. It's not black and white. There's so many shades of gray within this world that you honestly do not know the solution to get everything resolved. That is why this series is so fascinating and absolutely captivating. And how I say Tracker Bordy kind of goes through this complex political structure, I think is so well. She does not brush things under the rug. She does not look for easy solutions. She really will take you through a lot and you will feel very satisfied when something kind of positive comes because you feel like all the characters have worked for that. Uh, that being said, I loved the second installment within this series. I actually thought it was stronger than the first one, which is saying something because I gave the first one five out of five stars. Actually, I think I gave it 4.75 out of five stars and this one five out of five stars. So. I can't wait for the concluding novel within this trilogy. It's absolutely fantastic. Seriously, give this book a try. It has so much atmosphere, so much history. I promise you will not be disappointed if you pick this up. It is incredible. Honestly, more people need to be reading this series, so please read it. Alrighty guys, those are the top five books I read this spring. Let me know down below some books you've read this past season that you've loved, as I would love to know, and I'll see you guys soon with another video soon. Goodbye!